Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. It is May the 8th, 2022, the fourth Sunday of Easter, Christian Family Sunday, and we have a special service for an ordination of an elder. So I welcome you all to St. Andrew's today. As part of the service, as I mentioned that there, there is an ordination, so let me read the edict for ordination. Whereas Naomi Hussein, member of this church, has been duly elected to the eldership by this congregation and has been approved by the session, notice is hereby given that the session will proceed to ordain her to that office today. During this service following the sermon, unless some valid objection has been given to the moderator within 10 days from April 26, which has passed. So everyone, welcome again to you all. I'm glad to we're here for this wonderful celebration. And now let me pass it over to Reverend Kathy to lead us in today's service. Good morning, everyone, and happy Mother's Day. It is a privilege for me to be here this morning to lead in worship and to uh, ordain an elder to a ruling elder uh, to this congregation. Let us worship God. Our call to worship is a responsive call to worship, and I invite you to join with me in this call to worship. Come, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters. In oneness of Christ, we seek to worship God. Come, sisters and brothers from near and far. We gather together, children, youth, adults of varying ages, to see wisdom and gain strength to live as a family of God. Let us worship God together. Our opening hymn of praise is number 434, and I invite you to stand as we sing for the beauty of the earth. Thank you. 
Let us come before God with our opening prayers and our prayer of confession. Let us pray. O oh God, who in Jesus shared a home with Mary and Joseph, we gather to worship you on this Christian Family Sunday. In our worship today, we give thanks for the blessings and joys of family life. In the face of forces in our contemporary world that would destroy the peace and unity of the family, we come seeking your will for our own family and for the family of faith, Christ Church. Loving God, may we experience your presence in our midst as we worship together on this lovely May morning. Here are prayers of confession. God of mercy and God of grace, you call us to love one another as you have loved us. Sometimes we have regarded our families as burdens to be borne rather than gifts to be celebrated and enjoyed. We have reserved our best behavior for those outside our family while offering what was left to those who are closest to us. Lord, help us to rediscover the Christian virtues that build better homes. Teach us again the art of forgiveness that we may leave our hurts behind. Through our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never overcome it. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. This morning, as we share the peace of Christ, we will uh, offer a wave to one another as we share the peace of Christ with one another on this uh, special Sunday, Christian Family Sunday, Mother's Day, a fourth Sunday of Easter, and ordination service. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Good morning to St. Andrew's youth. And today is a special day. Today is Mother's Day, Grandmother's Day, and Great Grandmother's Day. So I am sure that you must have done something or planned something special for your mom on this special day. Jack's mom has gone to be with God, but we know that his Aunt Anne loves him and cares for him just as his mother would. So today we think about all the things that our moms or our Aunt Anne's do for us. They care for us when we're sick. They comfort us when we're hurting. They help us with our homework. They do our laundry. They uh, prepare our meals and our snacks and so many other things that our moms do for us. And today we want to say, thank you, mom, 
And not only today do we want to say, thank you, mom. We want to say, thank you, mom, every day. So youth of St. Andrews, remember to say thank you to your mom today and thank your mom for all she does for you every day. And we have up on the screen this morning, a happy Mother's Day. And thank you, Mom. Let's pray together. I'll invite you to join me in the words. Let us pray. Dear God. Dear God. We give thanks for our parents' love and care. We give thanks for our parents' love and care. Remind us. Remind us. To say thank you. To say thank you. Every day. Every day. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You presented me with a challenge this morning to uh, unite together ordination service, Mother's Day, Christian Family Sunday, fourth day of, uh, fourth Sunday of, e uh, of Easter. So you'll find that somehow I have, I have linked, uh, although maybe not obviously linked uh, all together in, in the scripture readings today. And so let me invite up uh, Dr. Jackie Periad Gupta to read our scripture for today. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and non-moms and other ladies too. Okay. Let's pray. Loving God, attend to us as we open your word. May our hearts and spirits listen for your will for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The first part of the Bible reading this morning is from Corinthians 13. Verse 4 to 13. I think anybody who's been to a wedding might recognize this one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease, for there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in it but disappears? When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all of these is love. The second part of the reading is from John 10, verse 11 to 16. 10, 11 to 16. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The message this morning is uh, addressed to the uh, 
leadership of this congregation, but I think the message applies to all of us because we are all called to service in Christ's church and to give of our gifts and our abilities in the service of God in this church or whatever, whichever church we find ourselves in. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In your name and for your sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. Being a leader is not an easy task. If a leader is too demanding or too controlling, we complain. If a leader, he or she is weak and non-directive, we complain. Being a leader is not an easy task. A leader's decisions inevitably affect others. In our reading this morning from John's Gospel, we hear Jesus describe his leadership style. And what Jesus says is, I am the good shepherd. around the Sea of Galilee and by the in different areas of the hillside, Jesus taught his disciples. He taught a group of 12 that he had called to be his disciples. These 12 disciples were called not only to be followers of Jesus, they accepted not only the challenge to follow Jesus, but to be part of Jesus' inner circle. They gave up their work. They gave up their lifestyle to journey with Jesus from place to place, to listen to Jesus' teaching, and to witness Jesus' miracles and healings. Jesus had no material war rewards to offer to his disciples. Their life as, as disciples was one of service. In fact, their life as his disciples was not easy and was a life of sacrifice. Yet these 12 continued with Jesus. They journeyed with Jesus because both in Jesus' words and in his actions, they saw Jesus to be a good shepherd. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says, and I know my sheep. It's very apparent from the Gospels that Jesus had care and concern for individuals. We hear many times about Jesus being out teaching, teaching on the mountainside, teaching by the seashore, teaching in towns and villages, great crowds of people that came to listen to him. But 
we find from the Gospels that a significant amount of Jesus' time was devoted to individuals. Jesus looked out to find individuals that he could reach out to. And it was evident throughout Jesus' ministry that he looked to individuals, to men, women, and children to offer them help in their personal and individual needs. Jesus had compassion for each individual that he met. Jesus had compassion on them. You may remember that Bartimaeus, who was a blind beggar, that Bartimaeus cried out from the roadside, Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me. The crowds who were following Jesus tried to silence Bartimaeus, but Bartimaeus would not keep silent. He cried out louder than ever, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus heard Bartimaeus cries from the roadside. He stopped and he responded to Bartimaeus' need. On another occasion, Jesus reaches out to offer healing to a man, a man who's been sick for many years, a man who's lying at the side of the pool of Bethesda hoping that someone will help him. Jesus reaches out to that man and helps and heals him, restores him to health and well-being. You will recall that while Jesus was passing through Jericho, he noticed Zacchaeus, who was a known despised tax collector. He noticed him perched up in a sycamore tree and Jesus stopped and he called Zacchaeus to come down to have conversation with him. And the gospel accounts tell us that that very day, salvation came to Zacchaeus' house. Jesus is the good shepherd, the good shepherd who cares for each one of his flock, whatever his or her particular need might be. Jesus comes in compassion and in love and reaches out to each one. Jesus endures hardship and he also goes to endless trouble in order to reach out and care for each one of his sheep. When Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection by the seashore, Jesus was cooking breakfast at the seashore. You will remember that Jesus, Jesus gave Peter, he re reminded Peter, he not only reminded P Peter, he charged P Peter to carry on his work, to carry on his work and to be a good shepherd. 
and to care for his sheep. We need to show care, even in the very simplest way. We need to show care even in the smallest way. We need to show care in acts of kindness and acts of hospitality. Perhaps someone who needs care is sitting near you now. In Alan Payton's novel, Cry the Beloved Country, the village priest has suffered so much. He comes to Father Vincent and he tells him, I feel that God has turned from me. Father Vincent quickly assures him, although that may seem to happen, it does not happen. Never, never does that happen. Reaching out to others does not have to be complicated. We can do so with simple acts of care. Something as simple as having conversation over a cup of coffee. In describing his style of leadership, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. May we also follow Jesus' example and be good shepherds too. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Good Shepherd, today and in the days to come, help us to trust in you and in your guidance along life's pathway. In your name, we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Our ordination hymn comes from the ordination section of the Blue Book of Praise. It's number 585. Christ, you call us all to service. Please stand if you're able.
There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. To each one is given a gift by the spirit, to one for the common good. Though we have different gifts together, we are called to be his church with a ministry to the world, which is led by the risen Christ. I invite you to join with me and to stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed is found at number 539 in the Blue Book of Praise. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And, and he, he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. I would call upon the uh, acting Kirk of Session, Alan Kay, to narrate the steps and to read the preamble. Moderator, Session finding it appropriate to increase their number, duly called for our nominations. An election was held on March 27, 2022 at the annual general meeting for St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple. Following that, Naomi Hussein was elected and thereafter an edict for ordination was sent out on April 26, 2022. Read at service on May the 1st, 2022 and again today. There were no objections received to the ordination of Naomi Hussein. Moderator, on behalf of the session and the people of this congregation, I present to you, Naomi Hussein, and request that you now proceed to ordain her as elder and admit her to the session. Listen to what the Presbyterian Church in Canada believes concerning the ministry of ruling elders. All ministries of the church proceed from and are sustained by the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our prophet, priest, and king, the minister of the covenant of grace. By the operation of God's word and spirit, the church is gathered, equipped, and sent out to participate in this ministry. All members of the church are called to share the gospel with the world and to offer to the Father the worship and service that are due to the creator from the creation through Christ, the only mediator until he comes again. That the church may be continually renewed and nurtured for ministry. Christ furnishes the church with pastors and teachers. He requires and enables the church to discern and to confirm by ordination those whom he calls to this pastoral and teaching office. The standards of this church, of his church, he entrusts in a special degree of responsibility to their care. The form of Presbyterial Church of Government of the Westminster Assembly reminds us that Christ has furnished some in the church beside the ministers of the word with gifts for government and with commission to execute the same when called thereunto, who are to join with the minister in the government of the church 
which officers reform churches calmly call elders. The Presbyterian Church in Canada is bound only to Jesus Christ, the church's king and head. The scriptures of the Old and New Testaments as the written word of God, testifying to Christ, the living word, are the canon of all doctrine by which Christ rules our faith and life. We acknowledge our historic continuity with the Holy Catholic Church and our doctrinal heritage in the ecumenical creeds and the confessions of the Reformation. Our subordinate standards are the Westminster Confession of Faith, faith as adopted in 1875 and 1889, the Declaration of Faith Concerning Church and Nation of 1954, the Living Faith, Foi Vivant, as adopted in 1998, and such doctrine as the church in obedience to scripture and under the promised guidance of the Holy Spirit may yet confess in church's continuing function of reformulating the faith. Now I return it, the service to you, moderator. These are some of the duties of an elder, setting the time and the form of worship, services, the use of the church building, overseeing Christian education programs for children, youth, and adults, providing pastoral care for the congregation and reaching out to the community. Ruling elders are under the direction of the presbytery. Naomi Hussein, that your faith in God and your integrity of purpose may be declared before God and all people, you are required in terms of the preamble to answer the questions appointed for all who would enter the office of ruling elder. Do you believe in God, the Father, made known in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom the Holy Spirit witnesses in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? Mm -hmm. Do you accept the subordinate standards of this church? And do you promise to be guided thereby in fostering Christian belief, worship, and service among the people of this church? Mm -hmm. Do you accept the government of this church by sessions, presbyteries, synods and general assemblies, and you promise to share in and submit yourself to all lawful oversight therein and to follow no divisive course, but to seek the peace and unity of Christ among your people and throughout the whole church. Mm -hmm. In accepting the office of elder, do you promise to perform your duties in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, striving to build up the church and to strengthen her mission in the world? May the Lord bless you and give you grace to keep these vows. I invite the congregation to stand. There are questions that I will be addressing to you and the answer to the questions is we do. 
the ordination of elders in a congregation, if their leadership and their ministry are to be fruitful, involves responsibilities for, uh, for the elders and the people together of the church. These questions, therefore, I direct to you, the members and adherents of St. Andrew's Church, so that you may renew your obligations to this shared ministry. Do you confess your faith in God as your ruler and creator of the world in, in, uh, in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and in the Holy Spirit as your inspiration and strength? We do. We do. do you receive Naomi? as an elder chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead you in the ways of Christ. We do. Do you agree to encourage her and to respect the elder's decisions as they guide you seeking Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? we do may the lord bless you and give you grace to keep these promises amen i invite the congregation to uh, be seated Naomi, I ask you to kneel. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we praise and glorify you for you have created us and called us to yourself. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ, your son. You sustain our lives and our, our work through the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, in every age, you have chosen servants to speak your word and to lead your people. We thank you for Naomi, whom you have called to serve you as a ruling elder. By the power of your Holy Spirit, develop in her the gifts of ministry. May she have the same mind that was in Jesus Christ, serving you in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Naomi, child of God, I ordain you to the office of ruling elder. We continue in our prayer with the unison prayer we will all join together in the unison prayer. God, God of, of grace, grace who, who baptized us into common ministry as ambassadors of Christ, who called us to be a priesthood of all believers, who entrusted us the message of reconciliation. We pray for courage and discipline to follow where your elders rightly lead us, that together we may declare your mighty acts and show your love to the world through Jesus Christ, who is ruler of all. Amen.
in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the king and head of the church, and by the authority invested in me by the presbytery of Oak Ridges, I now declare you to have been ordained as a ruling elder and admit you to the session of St. Andrew's congregation. Whatever you do in word or in action, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God through him. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Naomi, and God bless you, and may God's face shine upon you as you serve as a ruling elder in St. Andrew's congregation. Well, thank you all for that wonderful uh, service for ordination. And friends, offerings can be given to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church through our partnership with CanadaHelps.org. Go to www.CanadaHelps.org slash en slash dn slash 56495. Or donations can be mailed or delivered to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, 9860 Keel Street, Vaughan, Ontario, L6A, 3Y4. And for those who are here in the sanctuary, there are baskets at the Keel Street exit so that you can leave your donations in the basket. Our mission moment for today is talking about Presbyterian sharing. Presbyterian sharing is transforming lives in Central America and Mexico. Based in Guatemala, General Coordinator Judith Castaneda and the staff of the Protestant Center for Pastoral Studies in Central America, SIDEPCA, are empowering women and girls through the ministry of accompaniment. Women learn how to take on leadership roles in churches and their communities through faith-based activities about their personal and legal rights and the importance of formal education. After competing SIDEPCA's, SIDEPCA's excuse me, Healthy Relationships course, one woman said, I feel like a different woman. Before I used to live locked in my home with a domestic routine, but now I have new friends. We do creative things. If you'd like to help contribute to Presbyterian sharing, if you're paying online, there is a pull down menu for that purpose. And for those who are donating by envelope, there is a box to fill out on the envelope for gifts to go to Presbyterian sharing. All the gifts that are dedicated to Presbyterian sharing or other mission work all go to that. And so again, I'd appreciate and thank all of you for the, um, uh, for the help that you give and donations that you give to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church here in Maple to allow us to continue our mission work and that of the Presbyterian Church around the world. I have a quick announcement. Um, sorry, I don't remember the time. What time are you starting? Thank you. Uh, so uh, we're doing our churchyard cleanup day next Saturday, May the 14th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. Bring some rakes, bring some gloves. And with a lot of hands, we do a lot of quick work. And uh, our friends at Jesus Lord Church, who also share our space with us, uh, will be along to help in that regard as well. So let's uh, bring out the St. Andrews team to do that wonderful work. And now let me turn it back to Reverend Kathy. Let us pray. Gracious God, we dedicate these offerings to your service and to the extension of your kingdom. May your blessing be upon these gifts and upon each giver. Amen. Amen. 
our prayer for Christian Family Sunday will be followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the benefits and blessings of family life and for the opportunity for growth and understanding that it provides. We give thanks for all mothers and for the love of our mother that follows us all through the years. God, you sent your own son into the world as a child in Bethlehem. We thank you for all children entrusted to our care. Help us to remember that we are all your children and to love and nurture them that they may attain their full potential in life. Guide us through the tough times. Give us wisdom to make good decisions and to set good examples. Give us the grace and courage not only to teach our children your way of life, but to live it each day ourselves. Help us to build our homes on the fruits of the Spirit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Gracious God, we pray for youth and young adults in their life at home and at school, college, or university. Watch over them, guard them from the forces of evil at work in our society. Prepare them for the careers to which you are calling them and enable us to give them at all times the security of our love and the help of our example and our prayers. Lord God, nowhere is the complexity of modern life felt more than in our families. We pray for families where there is tension and discord. Support them through the hurtful times and enable them to seek forgiveness and to find peace and harmony. Loving God, we pray for those who live alone, that they may know your constant presence. Bless them with the fullness of your grace and peace. May they be remembered, befriended, and know your care of them each day. Merciful God, look upon all those whose increasing years bring them loss of strength and mobility and a sense of isolation. Provide for their needs. Give them caregivers who are gentle and kind. We pray for all who are sick. We pray for all who are sick in this congregation. We pray for all who are undergoing treatments. We pray for those who have family members who are ill and undergoing treatments at this time. We name them before you in the silence.
great physician, place your healing hand upon them and restore them to health and well-being. We pray for the people of Ukraine as they suffer and die from ruthless and horrific acts of war and brutality. We remember children and youth who are witnessing the horrors of war. We pray for the frightened and traumatized Ukrainians who are seeking safety and refuge in other countries. We remember in prayer today, the residents of Southern Manitoba as they endeavor to battle flooding from the rivers, support them in their efforts to cope and protect them from harm. God, hear these are prayers on this Christian Family Sunday. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Leave us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our, our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the, the power and, and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. My thanks this morning to our technical team, Alan and Dr. Jackie. And my thanks to Dr. Jackie, who read our reading from 1 Corinthians and from St. John's Gospel for us this morning. It has been indeed a privilege uh, for me to uh, be present and to, uh, to ordain Naomi to the office of ruling elder on behalf of your interim moderator, Reverend Dr. Heather Vice. We're going to stand for our concluding hymn, a hymn for Christian Family Sunday, number 703 in the Blue Book of Praise, Happy the Home When God is There. And I ask the congregation to remain standing after the hymn for the benediction.
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you both now and always. Amen. For those here in the sanctuary, we will have a time of fellowship following the service in the fellowship hall, immediately out uh, through past the uh, altar. So I do welcome you all and for after fellowship or for those who are not able to attend, I wish you all to go in peace. Oh, well, let me pause that. As you walk out, I'm going to put the flowers on the end. Can the ladies please take one each? Uh, just pick which one you like. Thank you. And don't miss Mother's Day cake and uh, ordination cake at Fellowship. There we go. So wonderful. These wonderful carnations here on the sanctuary. We'll leave those for you to take. Thank you. Thank you all and God bless. Happy Mother's Day.